This is the card, this is the track, and this is heavy metal. This is the heaviest song you will ever fucking hear! The heaviest song we have ever written! Huge shout out to Fob who paid with his switch points to put the Switzerland flag on my car. Hit it if you hate Switzerland. A bit of a risky move putting a target on the, the rear bumper of any car, really. First race of the season, we're starting in P2 as car number three with a 131.8, just a tenth behind Benji Peterson. So an opportunity to start my year with a win. That would be absolutely mental. Lap number one, going to have our signature grandpa launch. They are losing a bit of time to Ben up ahead, but not quite losing a position. Car number one, who started in P3, looking to go around the outside of us. This is 16 laps of Red Bull Ring, so we have quite a long way to go. No use in fighting him too hard uh, this early on in the race however i am ahead i have the inside and to be honest i really should have just driven directly into the wall that probably would have fared me better than what is about to happen just completely out of either of our control as we come through turn three turns out there was somebody who absolutely hated switzerland his name is adams right there and and as you can see he's backwards going about five times the speed possibly more that you want to be going through that corner Taking a look back at it, how exactly he ended up in that situation. Car number four, the side by side with him. A little bit of a net code to start that pit maneuver. Sends him all of the way around. I had no idea. This caught me so off guard as I was making that corner. Uh, I mean, not really his fault, I guess. It just happens like that sometimes. Results, yeah, that was the end of our race. So losing 128 I rating to start and Oh my God, I forgot about the safety rating. Okay, yeah, that was a terrible, terrible way to start the season. Possibly the worst way I have ever started a season. Next race, we are starting in P4 as car number six with a horrible 32.3. And I mean, look how close it is between myself all of the way back to Gabriel, who is two cars behind me. Lap number one, let's get right underway. Uh, my launch this time isn't going to be as great as the previous one. You can see the guys kind of pulling away a little bit ahead. That is also happening behind as both of the people behind me now find themselves alongside heading into turn one we are three wide i am on the very inside not exactly the best place to be have to take a super narrow line that's going to absolutely kill my exit there so losing a ton of speed both of them go through i've moved down from p4 to p6 already which is fine long race 16 laps as long as the same thing does not happen to happen last race i should realistically be fine however the car ahead is defending so this is going to put me in a bit of a weird situation he's taking the semi-defensive line slowing me down car on my outside is able to just about take the racing line of course he has to allow room on the inside but it's a much faster exit if you go around the outside of turn three he manages to get it done on top of that we did have to over slow so we lose that position now all of the way down to p7 we have moved down four positions in four corners pretty far from optimal but we're on track which is great uh that i would say is optimal trying not to lose the pack here heading through power horse very very difficult corner you have to super lightly trail break all of the way through there lawrence goes pretty deep there and we're not able to take advantage of it could have been a lot worse we're still kind of in touch with the group ahead lauren has the slipstream all of the way up to p1 so not too worried about that skipping back to turn three on lap one car number 20 objectively good move up the inside but looks like he overcorrects and car number 24 just not touching the brakes pushing him out of the way and then 20 spins around on top of that so what could have been one position for this guy turns into i mean negative five or six there he lost quite a lot through the final corner we go as we barrel towards lap number two. Laurent losing a little bit of time to Gabriel ahead. We're about over half of a second between Laurent and him. I'm a bit worried of losing the slipstream to that group ahead. I actually try and break early here for turn one. Still end up going into the back of Laurent, so I figure I need to make this move happen pretty quickly. Sorry about that, Laurent. Also, of course, I apologize because I'm a gentleman. And uh, honestly, because that does suck for both of us. They gave us a four times. And this track, there are enough incidents just with the off tracks. Moving to the inside as we barrel towards corner number three. Lauren's going extremely deep there. And I don't think he's going to make that corner. Car number 14, just about looking to take advantage, makes contact with Lauren as he cuts all of the way across the track, which is perfect for me. They are now fighting behind. I have over half of a second there. I do have a lot of time to make up to Gabriel, though. 1.3 seconds, which is absolutely doable. We still have 14 laps to go. However, he does have the slipstream of the cars ahead. I am just barely, barely getting the slip from him. So realistically, if we drive the same pace, he should theoretically pull away from me with the help of the slipstream, of course. And uh, I just need to drive some consistent laps and hope that, you know, he makes a little bit of mistakes and that the slipstream pays off for me in 
what little slipstream I'm getting. By the time lap number four comes around, we actually had made up a little bit of time. You can see himself and the car ahead both falling off of the cars ahead of them, which was the really fast pack, the uh, top three you can see up ahead of us. So I'm starting to get closer to P4 and five, which is great. I started in P4. I would be happy if I could climb my way back up there. Speaking of, P4 goes deep through turn three, and it looks like Gabriel is going to get a much better run. He has the slipstream now, heading towards a really big overtaking opportunity here in corner number four. You can go around the outside or the inside. Typically, this move will take a few corners to get if it's being defended well, and in this case, he's actually not even going to go for the move. He's going to stay behind, very close behind, and that little tiny bit of fighting right there, I mean, probably over slowing from Brian to take a little bit of a defensive line through there, has also slowed Gabriel down. We now find ourselves within a second to P4, under half of a second to P5, and uh, this is starting to look like a real possibility for us. It'll probably be a bit of the waiting game. I mean, I assume there's going to be fighting between these two. They're super close already. Ready. We've lost another three tenths to the top three this lap and I'm hoping that that will not open up too much because I want to be able to catch the top three, but the further away the top three get from P4 and P5, the less slip these guys have, the easier it will be for me to catch them and potentially get past them. I was feeling pretty confident in my turn one pace, and it's super important corner because it leads all of the way down this long straight, so as soon as these guys lose slipstream, really hoping that I could make up some time there. Uh, I'm just about in this spot now to where I should be looking to make a move, but I wanted to play it slightly patient I felt like there was going to be a move put down by P5 towards P4, so I was waiting for that to happen, but Gabriel just didn't quite seem to hook up this first corner well enough on a lot of his laps, and it would turn into a case almost more of me being able to attack Gabriel than Gabriel being able to attack Brian, and uh, perhaps I should have done it right here. I was within a 10th, Gabriel taking a slightly defensive line through there, which is going to put us even further off of Brian. We're now a over half of a second between P5 and P4, which isn't terrible. I mean, you can make that up on the straight alone if you get a good run there. However, my real worry was the growing gap to the top three. Uh, it's a, a, almost two seconds now between P4 and P3, and I can't really do anything about that right now. I have this card ahead of me. I have to take it one car at a time. I was just kind of really hoping that the pace of all three of us would pick up as none of us were running fantastic laps. I don't even think we any of us had touched the 31s yet, which is really the pace that you should be running. Coming across the final corner, we're over halfway, or we're about to be halfway through the race. 16 laps, we're heading on to lap number eight. It's time to get a move on. There's now a full second between P3 and P4. Pretty crucial that we get a good run here into the first corner. Potentially opportunity for us to make a move on Gabriel. We're only two tenths behind him and he is over half of a second to Brian. So our slip is definitely going to be stronger than his. He takes a semi-defensive line into turn three here. I'm not gonna attack it once again probably playing a bit too passive, something I'm going to have to focus on changing in the future, especially if I think that I have the pace. We get a decent run heading towards corner number four, going to be right up on his tail. Another missed opportunity for us to make a move. You're probably shouting at your screen right now. I know that I am kind of feeling that way watching this back. Like I definitely could have been more aggressive in a lot of these instances. Lap number 10 comes around. We are basically riding at the pace of Brian, who is setting it for the three of us. We got three seconds to P3, three seconds to P7 behind. So we're basically on this little island of three cars, and there is enough time for us to make moves on each other, which really nobody has done anything yet. We've just ridden in this little group. However, that's about to change. Gabriel looking up the inside into corner number three as he had a really good run there all of the way down that straight. They're going to go side by side. I'm going to take the racing line as much as I can, get a decent exit. They're still side by side and it looks like they're going to remain this way all of the way down towards corner four, which corner four is like the main reason I absolutely love this track. It's the start of so many battles and the battles can span four or five corners, trying to decide who I want to go behind, end up picking the inside car and that was the wrong car. Uh, he doesn't get the greatest exit. We actually make a little bit of contact as I thought he was going to get on the throttle earlier and he remains in P5. So no change of positions there, but just seeing that little bit of fighting kind of reintroduced the idea that these guys could potentially give me a position just by virtue of them getting into a battle of their own. And if I managed to navigate it correctly, we could find ourselves moving up a position. 
Looking like there is going to be a battle into turn one, not where you want to fight, reason being this is going to hurt both of their runs, give me the advantage all of the way down the straight. Sure enough, here we are, the inside suffers the most there, and he is going to have a pretty poor run. He's eventually going to move behind me for stronger slip, or actually I'm going to move ahead of him. And I guess that patience has finally paid off. We moved up into P5, one position away from our starting position. Would be great to get that back. So our attention is now fully focused on Brian up ahead. As we barrel turn towards four, we make a discovery that onto the brakes at the very least into this corner, I think I was a lot faster, still meeting the apex, but gaining a lot of time through the braking zone. So that potentially could open up the possibility of us looking up the inside. If we could get far enough on the inside through corner number four, uh, then we could potentially cut off his exit actually and get that done in one corner. A lot of times you'll see people going too wide through corner number four and that battle will go on all of the way until corner number nine which is the penultimate corner but if you nail it just right you can make that happen in turn four alone we have a really good run he has no slipstream as we've covered in the past we're heading towards corner number three looking up the inside here as the inside car you typically have a poor run out of here so i'm trying to open up the corner as much as i can carry as much speed through potentially cut off his exit not quite far enough ahead of him in order to do that i think we still had a bit of overlap so we're gonna go side by side into corner four he had a better run as he had that outside line so he slowly going to be gaining time on me all of the way down the straight just about fully side by side as we go into the braking zone I'm trying to brake just slightly later there get my car ahead we're gonna go side by side all of the way through I'm pushing out early though and I just managed to get my car ahead of him he looks to move to the outside for power horse potentially looking for a switchback I'm aware of that I am the inside car I'm just about going to park it on the apex here keep it super tight so he has no real opportunity to build a speed difference and we are going to maintain that position the problem now becomes maintaining this position defending and hopefully fully solidifying, building enough of a gap so that I am no longer under pressure. We have a few laps left to go, so the race is definitely not over. And I mean, he's right on my tail. We need a good run through the final corner here. I really, really want to avoid him trying to dive up the inside of T1 on this next lap, potentially putting myself and him at risk from uh, Gabriel, who's currently in P6, but could perform something similar to what happened to me when I was behind. And it doesn't look like he's close enough to quite go for a move here as we cross onto lap number 13, four laps left, including this one he's not making any type of move here so we're going to maintain the lead that puts us under threat at the end of this this straight of course I have no slipstream he's going to have mine I move over to the inside to defend this all of the way to the inside I'm literally just about on the grass as he moves over I'm going to try and find the space on the left as well definitely could have moved over more to make this corner easier for both of us but I'm going to maintain the inside here move to the outside which means he has the potential for a switchback does he have the overlap not quite I realize that and I actually move to the inside to defend this next corner I think going around the outside is actually the better route here if you can do it correctly however we are ahead of him heading into the corner, which should give the inside more of an edge. And we are going to pull ahead there, take the racing line. Car number eight now, as we are battling, is finding himself edge closer and closer to us. Still in the lead here, taking the racing line through Power Horse under no threat currently. That is an opportunity to make a move if somebody is close enough there. Diving up the inside of Power Horse is a very real possibility. Lap number 14, and we're going to turn our attention just for a second towards the battle for P2. So car number one here is in P3. The car ahead is in P2, and you can see P1 way up in the distance. Looking like a battle may ensue as they head into corner number three. Car number one looking for the outside, probably looking for a switch back here. Either way, he's definitely exit hunting. Doesn't really seem to help him out that much. He definitely has the slipstream, though, heading towards corner number four, moving to the outside as the car ahead decides to defend the inside at the last second. Side by side through here, and this is what I'm talking about. You have a much better exit when you nail the outside, and now he has the inside for Power Horse, so that's kind of the benefit of taking the outside there and what you can do with it. Side by side through Power Horse, car number two trying to maintain P2, probably pushing a little bit bit too hard here his car starts to slide very very small amount of contact he overcorrects flings the car out to the right into the sand and that will be p3 off of the track as we come through finding ourselves now on the podium super lucky for that we do still have some people behind us to worry about but they are now closer to each other than they are to me i need to continue to grow this gap by the time the final lap comes around i've put in a few good laps i've got them at about half of a second maybe less behind me but this is the crucial moment for me as i have no slipstream it's that very long straight. They could catch up here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to stay on the outside and the car behind me has to make the decision. Am I going to follow to gain the slip, which would open up the inside for car number eight? And he decides not to. He decides to hug the inside.
side, which now loses the slip from him, so it should keep me safe. And at the same time, they should be putting each other under pressure. Car number eight looking for a move around the outside, probably just to switch back. He's trying to hold that car ahead narrow, so he gets a poor run. And no matter what happens between them, this has basically secured P3 for me as they find themselves six tenths behind heading into corner number four. And looking back at this move, I mean, number one, it doesn't really even look like a move to me. Like, you, you guys be the judge. Did he cut him? Did car number five cut off uh, Gabriel's exit? I don't think so. Gabriel was not super happy about it, though. That's what I said, Gabriel. Very happy, very happy. I mean, that was honestly probably, like, the most tame defense and uh, kind of a lack of a dive from Gabriel. So I'm, I'm not quite sure where that was coming from, but uh, we do secure P3. So crossing the line, boom, for a podium, baby. Feels good. Uh, needed that one after the way our season started. And let's hop straight into the results now. A very satisfying finish, a much, much needed finish as well as we have once again been taking tanking in I rating as we tend to every now and then, uh, more often than not, it seems. Gaining I rating, a little bit of safety rating, which helps 0 0.01, you know, anything helps. Pace wise, we definitely should have been P4. I mean, these guys were way faster than me. I didn't even touch the 31s this race, which I definitely should be at least at that pace. If you guys enjoyed this and want to support me, please check out my channel and some of my other stuff. It helps me out so much.